Hey, what's up everybody? Chad Kalick here, and welcome back to the Intercredit Room Podcast for the first podcast of 2022, which before we get going here, I just have a, a few announcements and a, a huge thank you that I want to send out to all of you guys. Um, I got a lot of messages, uh, people asking if I was okay because I had mentioned um, that I had a surgery uh, done uh, over the course of the break and I'm totally fine. It, it was, uh, you know, I don't want to put my whole medical, you know, history out here, but it was just related to a couple years ago. Uh, you guys, uh, if you followed the Phantom Rider, um, release right when that was going to happen, I dropped a, a slate drafting cable, long story, um, on my foot and it broke my foot and some things just didn't heal right. And it was a much needed surgery. Um, that just had reoccurring issues. Uh, so it just got to the point where it was something that needed to be handled. Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing great. Um, I took the time to really just focus on uh, my health over the break. And uh, Laura obviously <laughs> made sure that I did. She was uh, playing Mama Bear for sure, which was awesome, you know. And uh, I had a wonderful time um, over break. It was cool to just you know, have the time to actually slow down a bit and think. I lead a, <clears throat> a pretty fast-paced life. I, mean, I, I don't get a lot of time to just think sometimes. And uh, because of uh, the medical stuff, I had to be on my back pretty much for, you know, the better of two weeks. Um, so it was cool. You know, it, it was a lot of time with Laura, which was amazing because we just don't get to spend a lot of time together, just her and I, uh, without, you know, work being in the middle of everything. So, um, so I just want to thank all you guys for the messages and the well wishes and to let everybody know that I'm perfectly fine and, uh, I'm doing well and bouncing back and the recovery is going well and, uh, everything's good. So that's cool. Um, I also wanted to let you all know that this Wednesday in a couple days, I am going to be on one of my favorite podcasts in the world. Uh, with my good friend Jimmy Church, the Fade to Black podcast, uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. PST, 10 p.m. EST. Uh, we're going to be getting into 74 minutes. Uh, we're going to be talking about it in depth, and uh, it's going to be a really, really good podcast. I always have a great time with Jimmy. Um, we just, our personalities just mesh. It's it's just cool, man. We're both We're both on the same frequency, you know, if you know what I mean. And uh, so definitely make sure you check that out. And if you haven't seen uh, 74 Minutes yet, uh, there's a link in the description below where you can watch it for $5 less than the current price that is on Vimeo On Demand. So that's easy. Just click that and, and uh, you know, within minutes, you'll be enjoying 74 Minutes. Now, let's get into... What has happened over break? And there's been a lot. Um, as far as, uh, you know, my Christmas goes, like I told you guys, I just like hung out with Laura and, and uh, same thing with New Year's. We were here. But leading up to the end of the year, there was a lot that went down. I don't know if you guys saw this, but Senator Harry Reid passed away. And if you don't know who Harry Reid is, he's actually responsible uh, for allocating that $22 million that you hear about that went to Bob Bigelow uh, to investigate the Skinwalker Ranch. And Harry Reid was just a big advocate in general of, uh, you know, getting the UFO uh, narrative, uh, the truth behind it all, out to the public. And uh, he passed away, I believe it was on New Year's Eve, the final day of the year, which was somewhat fitting because when you look back, over 2021, you know, if I could say what was the one narrative of the year that really stuck out above, you know, COVID, um, I shouldn't even say above COVID, but at least uh, uh, ran, ran parallel to it, was the UFO narrative, right? In 2021, we um, finally had the government come out and say, yes, UFOs are real, which I, I still don't understand. I mean, I do, I do understand why that would be a big deal because anytime the government is honest to a degree, that's a big deal. Um, 
but it was just weird because I, I'm still not a huge fan of the three videos that they released. Um, I, I think if the average person put those three videos out and said, look, I have three videos of UFOs, I think, you know, they would get torn up by the UFO community because there's nothing in those videos to me that seems uh, overwhelming. Um, you know, you hear things like, oh, these things are defying the laws of physics and all this stuff, but you, you certainly don't see that in those videos. But nonetheless, they were military videos. They did get the Department of Defense in 2021 to step up and say, yes, they are real. And uh, that was a big deal, you know. Um, also, I thought one of the biggest stories of the year, which I thought largely went kind of under the radar, was Although the um, congressional document that was put forward about, uh, you know, the UAPs, although it was very underwhelming, what was cool about it is that it did say that there was, you know, 143 cases uh, in, in recently that they had documented uh, that were unresolved. Um, it took... <laughs> it took a lot of television shows and a lot of interviews uh, before somebody would finally say um, other, right? Because they would say it's either us and it's not us or it's our adversaries, which we don't believe it is, or it's other. Uh, but nobody from the Department of, of Defense or from the group of people that were um, you know, pushing this narrative, Alizondo, uh, Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp, uh, nobody was saying, you know, what is other? And then finally, uh, you know, George Knapp finally said it in a, a TMZ interview, actually. Uh, of all places to say it, you know, George said, uh, you know, what is other? It's, you know, something that's not human, that's not us. And, uh, you know, Harvey from TMZ said, well, what are we, we talking about? And, you know, George basically said, uh, and I love the way he said it, he said, uh, they've always been here, and they come from the water. Um, and I think that's one of the better explanations that I've heard after looking into this subject matter. But it was kind of wild how that was just an unbreakable narrative. Like, no matter what happened with COVID, no matter what happened, no matter what happened politically, no matter what was going on, this UFO narrative was just a driving force. And whenever that happens, it's not an accident. I mean, it's a decision made. Uh, you know, as I said before, you don't have, um, you know, pilots, you know, naval aviators don't just come forward. You know, it's not like they're sitting around having breakfast and they're like, hey guys, why don't we call up the New York Times and just tell them what we've been seeing out there. You know, these things are, are well documented, well discussed. And, you know, it, it's a choice. And these decisions go all the way to the top. Uh, can you imagine a commander in chief? Uh, you know, what would happen to any of these pilots if they just decided on their own to just go and just leak this information out there? Um, you know, it'd be the instant end of their career. Uh, but I think that was the biggest story of the year as far as reporting um, goes. Uh, but it was a wild year, man. I mean, you know, it was a it was a tough year because, you know, this COVID thing, whether you, you know, believe in, uh, you know, the science behind the vaccine or you don't or uh, whether you're vaccinated or not, that's all political stuff that I, I, I just don't even have an interest anymore, you know, to debate, I think. Everybody's got to make their own decisions, and I'm cool with that, you know. Uh, that's the thing about freedom, you know. We're free to believe what we want and do what we want, and, you know, I can totally live with that. Um, but what was weird about COVID, is it's just this dark hanging cloud that is just constantly there, and it just provides nothing but negativity. And I think, I still think the biggest societal impact that COVID has had is the whole mask wearing thing. And not because masks are uncomfortable, but you know, we had a two week window. That's it. A two week window in LA. Now remember Los Angeles didn't even open up till June 15th. So the first half of, of 2021, we were still on lockdown 
And that was just mind bendingly, just excruciating, just to live in a scenario where you're told to stay in your house and don't go visit with friends and family. I mean, and don't, you know, uh, go to movies or dinner, you know, it was just, you really started, you know, to realize, uh, and maybe this is a positive thing, but the value of fellowship and the value of friendship and how important it is to share stories of your life with people and to, and to know what's going on and to have experiences with people and to make memories with people. And it was almost like life was just on a hold for like half the fucking year, you know? And it, it really, guys, it really messed with me because I think the biggest byproduct of that or the most negative byproduct of that was the fact that you just don't see people smile anymore. And maybe that sounds snowflakeish or tree huggerish or whatever, but like, that, 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 think how massive that effect is, you know, on society. And in return, we've seen, uh, you know, uh, shootings have gone through the roof. Suicides have gone through the roof. Uh, drug addiction has gone through the roof. I mean, there's been, a, it's been hard, man. And, uh, you know, people aren't over this. People aren't through with this. Nobody's bounced back from this. I mean, they're, they're still fighting it because every... You know, two, three months, there's an, a new variant, you know, first it was Delta, which I got and it was tough, man. That was a, Delta was twice the monster that the original COVID-19 uh, virus was. And, you know, then you hear now there's Omicron right now, which is spreading and I'm sure in three months we'll have Decepticon or whatever the next one is. And it was just very, very difficult to not only live where you're locked down, but to just never experience a smile. I mean, I don't think people realize how reactive we are, you know, as a species to, you know, emotion from other people. And when everything you do just becomes protocol, you know, when it just becomes a process. Uh, when you go into a store or whatever to buy a soda or something and everyone in line is just like robots and you can't see a smile. You can't, it's not even just a smile. You can't see a welcoming face. You know what I mean? Um, or when someone thinks something's, you know, clever or interesting, like all of those emotions are, are, are read to the face. I mean, you have a, you know, a mask covering you up 24-7, you know, or whenever you go outside or whatever, you, it was just, it, it was horrible. And, uh, you know, I remember, God, when was it? It was, oh, geez, it was probably, I'm trying to remember the exact month that it happened, but I was back, um, yeah, I think it was September. I was back in the Midwest and I was uh, filming some of the initial test shots for, you know, harbingers and, um, nobody in the Midwest had a mask uh, or, or nobody was wearing them. And it, it blew my mind. It honestly blew my mind that nobody was wearing them. And, but I gotta be honest, it, it, <laughs> it felt good. It felt good because, uh, you know, I don't ever, you know, really go out, uh, I shouldn't say ever, but I'm not, you know, look, I'm not a big bar person. I've never really been a big bar person. You know, even when I was in college, I was all about the the house party more than I was going to the bar. You know, I just, there's just something about being around a circle of my friends. And when I was back there a couple nights, I had the chance to meet up with some old friends that I was filming with and, um, you know, go out to a restaurant and, and hang out with people. And man, I'm telling you, it seemed like, a million years ago that that was possible. I mean, and, and it felt really, really good. And, uh, unfortunately that trip was marred by the loss of Bugsy. Uh, 2021 was a sad year because we did lose the bugs and, uh, it was uh, crazy. Oddly enough, we lost him to a sudden, uh, bacterial outbreak that, 
uh, hasn't happened in Los Angeles forever. Um, uh, he ultimately died of uh, a bacteria that uh, there had only been like 35 cases of it in 50 years. Um, it was called something like laprostosis or something. And then suddenly, uh, because the homeless population has increased so much, um, and the rat population uh, in Los Angeles is 11 times bigger than it's ever been, um, the public urination created uh, this bacteria. And unfortunately, it, it, it took my puppy from me. And uh, I found out that news when I was on that trip and got home just in time to get the Delta virus. <laughs> it was like the payback for having fun in the Midwest and being around people, uh, you know, was uh, getting the Delta variant. And, uh, you know, like I said, that sucked, but got through it. And, uh, you know, that that, that does not kill us makes us stronger. Um, but I also felt like whenever you have tough times, you know, and really Laura and I were talking about this at the end of, uh, well, well, right before 2022 came ringing in. Whenever you have tough times, the one beautiful thing about it is, uh, like I mentioned before, the appreciation that you get for those that, that you, you care about and those that love you. And that's one of the beautiful things about struggle is uh, struggle is great for art. Uh, I, I think it's the root of all great art. Um, it's great for storytelling. It's, it makes you appreciate, you know, the value of just hanging out with somebody that you care about. Um, you know, struggle takes away, you know, any kind of ridiculous wants, uh, for things that, you know, are, um, uh, material. Um, not that I've ever been a big material guy anyways, but, you know, like anybody else, you have, you know, toys you want to get and things like that. And, you know, whenever you go through a tough time, um, and I think 2021 was hard for most people. Um, uh, you know, the beautiful thing about it is the appreciation level that you have for the things that matter. They, they go through the roof, they skyrocket, you know? And I think that was kind of like the overall narrative for me in, in the year. And, uh, and there were some great things that happened too. I mean, my goal when I moved to Los Angeles uh, was to be able to make a film on my own, on my schedule, without anybody having any hand in anything creative, and to be able to release it to the world. And, uh, you know, we were very, very fortunate to um, finally land a, a great partnership uh, with Gravitas Ventures, uh, which is now the number one independent distributor in the world. Uh, actually, we landed a five-picture deal, which was huge. I mean, that was, you know, 20 years in the making. Um, that was really exciting. Um, and right before uh, the year ended, uh, you know, look, a, a lot of people in the paranormal field, they want to get on the Travel Channel because that, that leads to Discovery+. Plus. Uh, very few views, just so you guys know, very few people watch the Travel Channel or any other cable channel right now. Um, just because people don't watch timed television anymore, right? Everybody watches everything on demand and on an app, or the majority does. So, you know, where you used to see TV shows uh, that pulled, you know, 2.5, 3 million viewers, uh, you know, they will now get, you know, 100,000 viewers, 200,000 viewers. I mean, you know, 200,000, you know, active viewers on a cable channel right now, um, you know, a network cable like travel or discovery, something like that, that's considered huge because people just don't watch it. Uh, so the goal of a lot of people in the paranormal community um, is they want to get a show on travel so they can ultimately wind up on discovery plus because that's where all the views are. That's where you just get millions of views. And, uh, right before, you know, the year was up, uh, I announced mid year that, uh, I was blown away by the fact that discovery, um, uh, you know, purchased, uh, American ghost hunter, uh, or, or we licensed it to them, uh, which was awesome. And then right before the new year, um, in December, uh, we also licensed uh, Sir No Face and Two Face the Grey to Discovery Plus, which they're both on there right now. You can go watch Sir No Face and Two Face the Grey 
on Discovery Plus right now. So to be able to, again, make my films and have them go directly to, you know, what is the best platform for paranormal right now, which is Discovery Plus, uh, and not have to have, you know, your own series uh, to do that uh, is awesome. I mean, that's <laughs> pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, there were personal landmarks that we hit and uh, that, I, you know, I was really proud of. Um, but just as just as proud as I was of all that, I was equally as proud of the growth that uh, we've made with the In the Crowded Room podcast. Um, it's really become a thing. I mean, in 150 some episodes, uh, in which a lot of it, I was just doing it, you know, whenever I could, uh, you know, to have over 12,000 people, um, without any like promotional campaign behind it, uh, or, you know, there's been no like money spent on advertising for it. It's been purely word of mouth. Uh, that's a thank you to you guys because, uh, you know, there's a only, I, I can only talk to those people that uh, pay attention and to the people that you guys bring to the table. And uh, I'm, I'm blown away by the progress that we've made. And uh, this year we are going to focus heavy on uh, the In a Crowd Room podcast and also um, my YouTube channel as well. So uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, because uh, we're, we're actually, a lot of channels I've noticed will have like a 30% viewership and like 70% of the people that, uh, you know, follow uh, the podcast aren't subscribed. Um, the last time I checked, I believe we were at like almost, almost a 65% subscription rate, which is really high, uh, which is great. Um, but if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Um, just click the subscribe button and click the bell. And, uh, and, and please continue to tell people about what we're doing. Um, we also launched our Patreon this year, which has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed releasing uh, you know, footage and pictures and evidence and stories that you know, I've never released before. Um, just over the holidays, two of my documentaries that are on, uh, Vimeo on demand, um, uh, I released for free and just gave them to our, our Patreon followers to watch just cause I wanted them to enjoy some of my films. Um, and that's, that's grown and it's got us through the point where we're about at the halfway point of what we need to bring on, um, an editor to handle all the editing duties, uh, editing duties, sorry, I'm a little tongue tied. Uh, for the show. Um, that's been awesome. Um, just in general, the support has been crazy. The growth has been crazy. And every single day, it gets bigger it get, and bigger, and we march closer and closer. So it's not a matter of, uh, you know, if we'll hit our goals, it's a matter of when. And um, so this year, we're going to really put a lot of time into uh, making sure you know, the podcast is as regular as possible until we can get that editor and then it'll be regular, regular, you know. Um, but that's been a big story for me. Uh, and then the other personal story for me this year that I'm super excited about, I'm going to do a podcast about it coming up. Uh, if you look at the screen right now, uh, this is a photo of me in, oh gosh, 2015. And, uh, and this is a photo of me today. Uh, it was actually taken today. And uh, I did finally reach my goal of losing 150 pounds. And I'm going to uh, have a podcast about it soon. And I'm going to talk about it. Uh, because it was a slow process, but it wasn't an unenjoyable process. Probably the first three weeks really sucked. Uh, things were kind of hard the first six weeks. But by the time I was, you know, three, four months into it, it was just a different way of life and I was on cruise control and it was just a matter of maintaining and, and I had plenty of bad days where I'd fall off the wagon. You just hop right back on and we'll get into, you know, how that was all done. It wasn't an overwhelming amount of exercise uh, either, which uh, that's, that's kind of like the next uh, step of it. Um, but again, we'll get into all this coming up, but that was a, a big thing 
I guess for me. And then at the end of the year, um, just taking the time to really focus on, uh, you know, my health, that was a big thing. And, you know, moving forward, you know, I, I, I really just think that 2022, uh, barring anything insane from the ethos or the cosmos or, you know, from our government or anything, you know, and, and you never know, man, because I don't think our, our world is going to get any less weird. Um, I really believe that 2022 can be a massive, massive year, uh, for everybody, for anybody who wants to go out and, and make it that. And I, I think that, uh, uh, for me, you know, I have goals in mind and things that, uh, you know, I'm going to be, um, you know, striving to achieve. And I hope that's the same for all of you. Um, because consistency is everything. The more you can stay on something consistently, uh, the quicker you will get to that place. So this year for me is, and this is not anything that I've never known before, but like, I've just really, um, I really felt like there were some places in, in my life, the podcast as well, that when we were able to be really, really consistent with it, uh, the numbers like tripled, you know, um, the weight loss when I was able to be, you know, consistent with the effort, uh, everything, you know, took off and, um, but I think there's going to be a lot coming down the pipe, uh, you know, in 2022, especially in regard to the UFO narrative that is going to be, uh, mind blowing to all of us. Um, thankfully, thankfully, uh, I'm hearing that Australia is starting to open up again. And look, man, I love my boy, Craig Powell and his entire family. They have been through a incredible, incredible year uh, that has been extremely difficult. And every time I thought things were getting hard for me or weird for me, uh, you know, I'd talk to Craig and I'd just be like, wow, I mean, he is, he's really fighting, man. He's really fighting to, to keep, uh, you know, to keep the boat above water. And, and he has, and I knew he would. And same thing, uh, with his lovely family. I mean, they're, they're all warriors over there. Nikki's a warrior. I mean, I just knew they would all be okay, but it's, it's been a huge battle. Um, to those who ask, so have things just stopped with, you know, um, you know, Skyfall and is there ever going to be a pale face? Of course there's going to be a pale face. Uh, things haven't stopped on the UFO side. There's been all kinds of weird stuff that's been documented, but I've not been able to get back over to Australia. And, uh, even if I could, um, you know, throughout this pandemic, like I said, Craig was just really dealing with some wild stuff, man. And we're talking like martial law stuff. If you haven't listened to it, please go back and listen to my interview, uh, with Craig and, uh, it'll blow your mind. It's probably, I don't know, 20 episodes ago or something. Uh, it will truly blow your mind. And, um, you know, things have to, A, I have to be able to get into the country, uh, to finish this. Uh, but I also have to know that it's the right thing for Craig and his family. I mean, they obviously come first. I mean, he's had to move to different locations. Uh, you know, he's been forced to take different jobs um, uh, due to the vaccine. Uh, and, uh, you know, because Craig's anti-vax. And uh, again, this is not a political thing. I don't, yeah. I'm down with anybody who wants to do it. I see reasons why people would be. I see reasons why they wouldn't be. Um, you know, I've, I've been vaccinated and I've... <laughs> I got the Delta variant. I'm sure I'll get Omicron, uh, you know, so, um, it, it really isn't a political discussion for me. It's whatever you want to do. And for me, I know that pale face, uh, will happen because we have so much that's already filmed and already documented that you guys don't know about. I think people lose track of the site that Sir No Face, you know, took almost three years to make. And then so much was happening when I rolled out Sir No Face. I just kept going almost at real time with Two Face and then with Phantom Rider. And, and then 
literally the reason I will always remember March 15th, uh, 2020, that was the release date of Phantom Rider. That was also the date where LA got its first shutdown notice. So literally, you know, we went into shutdown mode and Australia went into like martial law lockdown mode, <laughs> you know, and it's been a, a really, you know, a difficult time for, uh, for Craig specifically, and and he's dealt with stuff that's far beyond what I've dealt with. Um, so I, I know he has the will to finish this. I know what it'll take to finish it and to, and to do it right. Um, but before we can you know approach that, obviously Australia has to be opened up, uh, which I understand that's happening right now. Um, once we know that it's going to stay open, then it's just a matter of. Uh, you know, really figuring out when is the right time to go over there and uh, finish this. And in the meantime, you know, uh, my focus right now, as far as films go, I've never been more excited about any film to make than House of the Harbinger Kingdom. Um, that, or Harbingers is just short. Sometimes you just say a Harbingers because uh, that's just shorter. It might wind up just being that's what we name it, just Harbingers because that's easier. Um, but there's a reason for the Harbinger Kingdom, which you'll understand why it's called that once you see the film. Um, but I can announce, and I will say to you all for the first time ever, that that is actually going to be a trilogy documentary. It's going to be three. And uh, I'm looking forward to, right now, the tentative active production uh, time period that we're looking for is late February. Um, but I'll keep you guys up, updated on that, and we'll let you know. Uh, but the one thing I do really want to talk about before, uh, you know, we end this is a lot of people have asked me, what do you think is going to go on with the UFO narrative in 2022? Because to um, a lot of people, and I don't understand why the mainstream media, they covered it full blast all the way up through the, you know, congressional uh, document that was released until they got to Showtime's UFO series with J.J. Abrams, in which the tone and message of that entire film, uh, or that entire series, was something big is coming, and the world's not ready for it. Well, as I talked about, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, a lot of things are shaping up right now. Uh, NASA launched the James Webb Telescope, which supposedly can see the event horizon, first light, Big Bang, and we keep hearing things like, for the first time ever, we're, we're going to get to actually see with detail what's out there in the universe. Uh, well, that's convenient <laughs> as far as the timing goes of everything, and out of the blue, NASA just has this multi-billion dollar you know, uh, telescope that they launched. Uh, plus, we have this DART program that's going on right now that NASA just launched, which, which is basically they're going to bomb a comet uh, or an asteroid or a comet, one of the two, and try to see if they can actually uh, take it you know, off its course. Um, but one of the most interesting things that just came out, and I think this says a lot, and I think it is really lining things up for 2022, is that NASA just hired... Uh, a ton, I think almost almost either a dozen or, or two dozen uh, religious uh, theologians to discuss how they feel um, that the world will respond uh, to the announcement that we've made contact and that we're not alone. This is this is a real thing. NASA uh, just you know, well, th there's different stories out right now. One says that they hired these theologians four years ago and one says uh, another another narrative right now says well they contacted them four years ago but but in the last year they've really gotten uh you know into heavy conversations with them about how they believe the public will respond my thing is either way four years ago i mean that was like you know if 2017 2018 that was right when all of this ufo narrative stuff began so whether it was four years ago or just recently, the fact that NASA felt the need, I think it was $1.1 million that they spent to hire these guys to come and explain to them, 
you know, what will be the risks of announcing uh, this from a religious standpoint, uh, you know, to all the different cultures around the world. That's, guys, that says something. I mean, that says something is going on right now. Um, in other news, you know, they announced that, you know, the Navy has this new protocol for pilots and naval aviators to basically um, inform their superiors if they have a UFO event, right? And then it was announced that there was going to be uh, a brand new branch of the government, basically, that was going to investigate UFOs. And what's really interesting is the, the Pentagon said, oh, we're doing it. We're setting it up, which really pissed off a lot of congressmen who were like, listen, we don't need to have the Pentagon do this. You know, they're the home of the double secret meeting. And, and you know, the Pentagon is like uh, some of the, you, you know, it's like the biggest liars in the world, you know, uh, come from the entire, you know, Pentagon scenario. Not that they're not all liars, but, you know, it was just weird how, you know, it, it was the, the Navy and the Department of Defense were handling this, basically. And ATIP was a group that was inside the Department of Defense. So then out of the blue, you just hear the blanket, the Pentagon will handle this. And, you know, there, there's a reason for that. I mean, it, it's, they are the ones who drip truth. You know, the, these dark Pentagon uh, groups, they uh, spill lies and drip truth, if you know what I mean. And um, I think the stage is set. I mean, the stage is set perfectly for something really big to happen this year. And I truly believe it's going to happen this year because we're going to get our first images from the Webb uh, telescope this year. Um, this test to blow comets and asteroids off their course is going to happen this year. Uh, NASA right now is working with the theologians this year. Um, and there's new footage all the time. I don't know if you guys saw this, but if you look at the screen right now, uh, this was, I believe, December 26th. This was over the South China Sea at 39,000 feet. Um, you know, this pilot saw this. At 39,000 feet above the sea, even the commercial pilots recording this were astonished. I don't know what that is. That is some weird shit. Pretty mind blowing. I don't know what it is. Could it be military? Sure. Uh, could it not be? You know, well, this pilot certainly has no idea what it is. Um, so, yeah, of course it could be military. It could be something man made. It could be something, as George Knapp says. That's always been here that comes from the water. The Tic Tac uh, UFO was just right off the coast of, of here, just right by the Catalina Channel. They also believe that this underwater base that's, you know, north of uh, Malibu um, exists. And there's a lot of reasons to believe in that. So I think the stage is set. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts uh, about what you think. Um, yeah, man, just let me know in the comments what you think 2022 will bring and, uh, you know, what do we all have to look forward to? And uh, once again, man, I just want to thank you guys for, for being there, for being cool, for supporting me. Um, please, uh, you know, remember uh, to on Wednesday at 7 p.m. PST, uh, make sure you tune in to my boy uh, Jimmy Church's Fade to Black podcast. I will be on there uh, once again talking about 74 minutes. And... Um, yeah, man, that's about it. It feels good to just be back and doing a podcast, guys. I'm going to do my best to be as consistent as I possibly can. Uh, I have a couple other episodes that are recorded that I'm going to try to get out over the next two days as well and just stay as consistent as possible. And I am going to be bringing a few guests on as well. I don't want to tell you who they are yet, but I think you'll be uh, hearing about that soon enough. Uh, and there will be some more podcasts that I'm doing uh, that I'm appearing on as a guest coming up as well, which I will let you know what those are when they're confirmed. Until then, man, much love, everybody. Happy New Year. It's good to be back. Uh, let me know how your New Year's went in the comments as well. And uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Intercrowded Room Podcast. I will be back tomorrow with more. All the best.